Hey everyone, Kachi Messier back to another video for today. So let's talk about Amazon, an amazing quarter, one of the best earnings reports of this earnings season so far. You've probably heard this already, you've seen the stock reaction as well. So in this video, I do want to focus more on the earnings call, what was mentioned there. Now, for those that have been following the channel for a while, Amazon is my second largest position in my portfolio. Number one is Tesla. Number three and four depends on the week or month, but usually it is Meta and Mercado Libre. Now, with regards to Amazon, I've been saying this for a while. There will come a moment when suddenly the whole market will look at Amazon and say, whoa, they can be extremely profitable. There can be free cash flow positive. Well, guess what happened? This is the picture that we see today. During the pandemic, everything was great, but they also overinvested. And then after the pandemic, they got hit hard, especially when it comes to free cash flow, a disaster there, right? But slowly but surely, they made their way back up. And this quarter was a pretty nice one. Now, we could have seen this coming, right? I mean, those that have looked at Amazon more deeply have seen this coming. Because if you looked at their operating cash flow, you could have seen that since Q2 2022 and even before, things have become much better. It has been on the rise for a while. And yes, now this quarter, and yes, this is trailing 12 months. I don't know why they're giving us trailing 12 months. I mean, we can do this by ourselves, give us quarter by quarter, but still, you can see that Q2 suddenly huge jump, negative $3.3 billion to now $7.8 billion in the plus. And that's exactly what we are seeing here and also with the return on equity. And in my opinion, we are just starting. Bigger, better, faster, stronger, more profitable Amazon is here to stay. Now, of course, some will say, yeah, but look at the PE. Yes, it's true that right now it has a PE in the next 12 months of 58.6 times. But if you look at the projections for fiscal year 2024 and 2025, let's take 2025 EPS 4.2, that's 33 times earnings, and it is growing over 40%. So, I mean, I've seen worse company around, right? And we're talking about Amazon here. So I would say in this case, maybe don't really look or focus just on PE. I think in most companies, there are way better metrics to look at rather than just PE. PE to growth ratio, for example, is already a much better one. And then free cash flow and free cash flow per share is also a pretty good one. All right, so first thing first is a counter argument to the argument that has been made about, well, Amazon chasing faster speed while driving its cost higher and where it doesn't matter much to customers. If you know Amazon, you know that customer satisfaction is still the number one priority. And so they said here, customer care a lot about faster delivery. We have a lot of data that shows when we make faster delivery promises on a detailed page, customer purchase more often not just a little higher, meaningfully higher. Second, when shipments come from fulfillment center that are closer to customers, they travel shorter distances, which costs less in transportation, gets there faster and is better for the environment. There is a lot of goodness in that equation. And of course, with them electrifying their fleet, the cost will come down eventually as well. Moving on, so far this year, we've delivered more than 1.8 billion units to US Prime members the same or next day, nearly four times what we delivered at those speeds by this point in 2019. We now have more than 300 million items available with US Prime free shipping, including tens of millions of items with free same day and one day delivery. And they continue by saying that in Q2, they offer customers 144% more deals and coupons than they did in Q2 2022, and Prime Day was similar. Amazon offered more deals than any past Prime event with a wide selection across millions of products. Prime members purchased more than 375 million items worldwide and saved more than $2.5 billion across the Amazon store. To be honest, for those that are living in the United States, you get the best out of Amazon when you have a Prime membership. In Europe, it's good but you don't get the whole thing. Like in the United States, I'm pretty jealous about that. Now, let's talk a bit more about AWS and the chips that are being used there. So today, more than 50,000 customers use AWS Graviton chips and AWS Compute instances, including 98 of their top 100 Amazon EC2 customers. And these chips have about 40% better price performance than other leading x86 processors. 
They continue by saying here, customers are excited by Amazon EC2P5 instances powered by Nvidia's H100 GPUs to train large models and develop generative AI applications. However, to date, there's only been one valuable option in the market for everybody and supply has been scarce. So what did they do? Well, they started working several years ago on their own custom AI chips for training called Trainium and inference called Inferentia that are on their second versions already and are very appealing price performance. We're optimistic that a lot of large language model training and inference will be run on AWS Trainium and Inferentia chips in the future. Of course, this means that they'll increase their investment in AI and in AWS, more on that later on. Then with regards to the offerings, we already talked about Bedrock on this channel. So Bedrock will basically give you access to models from companies like Entropic, Stability AI, AI21 Labs, Cohere and Amazon's own developed large language model called Titan. And overall, what they're doing is democratizing access to generative AI, something we've heard Intel talk about as well. Now, you've probably heard the argument or the comment of, well, AWS is slowing down, Microsoft is catching up. AWS still today is much bigger than Azure, much, much bigger than Google Cloud as well, and it is still growing. Now, what's their big advantage here? They say here, remember, the core of AI is data. People want to bring generative AI models to the data, not the other way around. AWS not only has the broadest array of storage, database analytics, and data management services for customers, it also has more customers and data store than anybody else. They also got asked about what do they think about what normalized growth could look like for AWS in a better macro environment, and more about the $50 billion in CapEx. So first of all, he says here, Andy Jass, he says here about the growth of AWS. So growing double digits on $88 billion revenue run rate is not bad. And so I'm very bullish on the growth of AWS over the next several years. And any one quarter, it's hard for me to predict, but I am bullish about it in the medium to long term for sure. Then with regards to the investment, so in AWS that is has been true for the very earliest days, which is more demand that you have, the more capital you need to spend because you invest in data centers and hardware upfront, and then you monetize that over a long period of time. So I would like to have the challenge of having to spend a lot more in capital in generative AI, because that would mean that customers are having success and they're having success on top of our services. But I think that's our best estimate right now on that capital expense, and we'll update it if we find it's different. Now, moving on to the other parts of the business, in this case about Amazon Pharmacy. So they were pleased about the doubling of its active customers since last year, and they're pleased with the response of the RX Pass, which enables Prime members to receive all of their eligible generic medications for just $5 a month, and have them delivered free to their door. One Medical has been part of Amazon for just a few months now, but they're encouraged by what they're seeing too. With regards to working at Amazon, they wanted to recognize their teams on being named number one in LinkedIn's top companies to grow your career in the United States. It's a testament to our work to be a great employer with leading compensation benefits and upscaling opportunities. But of course, you'll always have the headlines of unions, of strikes and whatnot, to try and damage these types of companies. Then, with regards to the third-party unit mix that has increased 60% during the quarter, the highest level they've seen ever, and we're continuing to see good growth in the number of sellers and the units sold per seller. They're also making steady progress on improving our worldwide stores profitably. Now, talking about international when it comes to sales... This is the sales segment for North America. So net sales were up 11% and you can see your operating income, well, a huge, huge increase in profitability. Now $3.2 billion, same quarter last year, a loss of $627 million. Then if you look at international, net sales increased 10%, but here it's still a loss, but improving pretty fast. 48% better than last year. And also you can see in the last couple of quarters, it has been improving. And so last couple of things here, one of the questions was about Amazon business. Where could this go? So you're saying here right now at 35 billion annual run rate for gross sales, it's a pretty strong growth. And the team is working hard to build 100 billion plus business over time. Pretty cool. 
And then last question here from Brian Novak, how should we think about sort of the forward slope of North America retail margins and sort of invest in some of these new initiatives in the retail business? So in short, Andy Jassy said here, I do believe that we'll get back to margins like what we had pre-COVID and I don't think that's the end of what's possible for us here. Again, pretty promising. And so while Amazon might be a $1.4 trillion company, I think we're just starting to see how profitable the whole Amazon ecosystem can be when it works together. The more free cash flow this company will have, the more they will be able to invest in the business or reward shareholders in the future. Because remember, it's one of the big tech companies that has not been able to buy back its shares when it was cheaper. So in the future, if there is a crash, they'll be able to do so. So that will be it for this video. Of course, do share your thoughts down in the comments below. If you enjoy this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.